Okay, we should be live now, Your Worship. Okay, thanks very much, Jen Kane Percy. Hello, welcome everyone to the uh, Clearview Economic Development Advisory Committee meeting. This is uh, April the 5th, uh, 2022, uh, April meeting for our committee. Our CAO, John Ferguson, did send me a note that he is going to be running a little bit late, but he is coming. So we will get to him in a moment. So in the meantime, we'll uh, welcome everybody. We do want to say our check with Jen, if I may, Jen, uh, you did connect with Heather that from the BIA and she can't make it today for some reason. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. She was looking at sending someone else, but I never heard back from her. So maybe she couldn't find anyone. Okay. And did we get any uh, call from Kelly who may also would be joining us? Kelly, I believe did send her regrets too. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't think I saw that personally, but anyway, I just thought I'd check. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, anyway, guys, we'll carry on. We do have a couple items here to talk about today. So uh, first thing, of course, is declaration of, of disqualifying interest or general nature thereof. Anybody got any disqualifications? No? Okay. We'll just, uh, if anything comes up, we'll deal with it. Uh, approval of the agenda, recommendation be it resolved, the Economic Development Committee, Advisory Committee agenda, uh, hereby approved the agenda for April 5th, 2022. And that can be moved by Barry, seconded by Bill. Jennifer. Jennifer, did you have something you want to say? Oh, then you're just all in favor. All good. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so that was our agenda. Approval of the minutes. The minutes are from March the 2nd. Uh, have anybody got any questions about that? We're going to approve the minutes as well. Be it resolved, the Economic Development Advisory Committee hereby approve the minutes of eight, March the 2nd, 2022, uh, as presented. Any questions about the minutes? Nope. Okay. Can I have somebody to move it? Jennifer and Bill, all in favor? Yippee. That carries. Thank you very much. So now we get to the business part where we business from the minutes. And the first item is music on the park. Bill Roscar. Uh, I know we had a couple of messages come up literally right after our meeting last time. So Bill, why don't you outline for us what you're looking for here? Well, bottom line is, uh, and I won't uh, make, drag this on for a long time, but uh, uh, the kids are doing the music in the park and the cost of the bands and the, the fees that we have to ha have to pay to um, for licensing and all that sort of thing, it'll be upwards of $10,000. Um, normally what would, what would happen, TD Bank came in with 3,000. Uh, that, uh, their, that program that they were using has gone bye-bye. I guess, I guess things are tough in the banking business. They can't afford that anymore. <laughs> um, so we're looking at getting sponsorships from the local business community and the merchants and that sort of thing. And after the last couple of years that they've had, um, it's a little bit tough, tough to go around and ask them. We, we, we've been hitting them up for, for the dark race and they're participating, but I can tell that they're, they're hesitating. And I, you know, I can't blame them either. Things are, things are tight out there. So yep. this committee is sitting with some unused budget money. And I really think the music in the park is a big thing for business. It'll, it'll help bring a lot of business to the, to the community, to the park. Um, and we've got some uh, uh, Sipco County promotional money that we're gonna use to help bring more people in. And I think this committee should, should uh, step up and, uh, and recommend to council that we, uh, they subsidize it to the tune of $10,000. Okay, there's a presentation. Um, I see John Ferguson has joined us, maybe from a staff perspective. John, uh, do you have a comment? Welcome, first of all. Do you have a comment about Bill's uh, recommendation and how the process would work for us to assist? So if, I'm, if, I'm, if I understood correctly, I'm not sure if I got the whole conversation, but I think originally it, we were going to fund what the TD wasn't funding, which I think was around $3,000. But there's been other circum financial circumstances that have arisen that's lending itself to being a basically a $10,000 request as, as opposed to a $3,000 request. Is that 
basically right. it. Yes. Um, I, look, I'm, I, I think we could find the money. Um, uh, it'll have to go back to council. I forget what ca council did approve something. I forget the amount. Was it 3000 or five? Off the top of my head, I don't recall it. But, I thought uh, we approved something too that was coming out of the, you know, the community fund. That uh, we, I thought we approved something. I can't remember. I thought we was. approved. I thought we approved three. But uh, if uh, if we've got to go back, uh, we'll go back. We'll check our records. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Chair, sure. I'd be willing to put forth a motion now. Uh, okay. you know, that, 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 that we cover the expenses up to 10, we'll say cover it up to $10,000. And, uh, I don't know how to word it. We'll let Jen, we'll let Jen do the wording, but, uh, my motion is that, uh, you know, um, the economic development committee, uh, recommend that, uh, we finance or we support, don't use the word finance. We support, uh, music music park it and and uh, at the park and then that we um, you know uh, up to ten thousand dollars and uh, if there's other money that we've already committed to then you know okay so so up to so that covers us if there's other money that we've already committed to then you know we'll just do the difference you know okay. how to write it Jen you know what I'm saying <laughs> put the pressure on Jen Kane Percy um I, I get it. Uh, first of all, I think I would add to that motion that we uh, ask council to support that because yes. this committee has to send it to council. Yes. So the motion would have to include the words that we're going to ask council to support it. Right. And that would be delivered by the CAO as a report to council from this committee. Right. Okay. Any questions about, or actually does somebody want to second that? Somebody want to second that? Anybody got a seconder on this? I don't think it'd be fair for me to to do okay, that Judith and Jennifer, it's up to you guys. Right. You want, okay. Okay, Judith is in for the seconding. Okay, sure. now here's this is your great opportunity. Now we got to move her in second here. Let's see if there's any discussion. Anybody got any questions about it? I, I, I'll, I'll ask a question. Oh. Go ahead, Judith. Did the TD have a different program? Like the TD, the banks had money. Did they just eliminate that program and they couldn't, you know, pencil it in on some other kind of program? I was at, I asked that question and basically they said no they couldn't think of anywhere that that, that, that would apply. Um, you would think so, but they yeah. don't, don't seem to. We've kind of lost the community touch, I think, at that branch. Yeah, well, I think yeah. the bank have lost the community touch all across the board. Yeah, pretty sure the Royal Bank is missing these days. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anybody else with any questions or comments about the uh, request? The only comment I would make is that uh, we recommend that the funds come out of the, the um, you know, the community fund. The economic development the, fund? No, no, the community fund. The, you know, the one that Connie and I sit on. That's, I'm trying to think of the name of it. Uh, the, and we have like 60 the grants. Community, the community, yeah, we have, we have. Uh, community four assistance grants. Community yeah. assistance grants. Uh, I'm unsure if that qualifies, Barry. Uh, I'd have to ask the clerk, but I'm unsure if it qualifies mainly because um, the music market in Park is a Clearview Township sponsored event. So it's it's kind of like our small hall festival. It's sponsored right. through taxation. So whereas the community grant is actually for external uh, programs. So I think it actually comes out of the uh, uh, out of either economic development fund or it comes out of the um, council um what do you call it? The council benefit uh, fund. Right. So it, I, I got to check on that for sure. But I think the community grants Either thing or. that you yeah. and Connie recommend. Yeah. Um, I, I do have a commentary, if I may. I, I, you know, I, I think it's it's a decent idea. And Bill, you're right on that. It would help local businesses. I have no doubt that the music market and park it does in fact help local businesses in our community. So I would hope that while we're you know recommending that there be some type of financial support, I think it's important that this committee the Clearview Economic Development Committee get acknowledgement somehow, some way uh, at these events, whether it be a, a little banner or something gets put up in the gazebo to indicate it's a Clearview Economic Development Advisory Committee uh, that's uh, that's supporting this, uh, as Barry said in his motion, that's supporting it. So that's where I'm hopeful at least we'll, we'll get a little bit of acknowledgement that this committee is doing this project uh, at this time. But And, and the, other, the other comment I'll add too, 
uh, Bill, is that I think I would encourage the organizers of the event through John, the CAO, that they need to find sources for uh, for this that are you know outside of your taxpayers dollars to do this i think we do need to see about the td bank or other corporations who wish to support this type of thing in the future but i can see that because we didn't know that the td bank were going to back out that this is sort of a stop gap i believe bill does that sound sound fair yeah i, I certainly have no problem with some signage and, and promote the economic development uh, aspect of it with some science signage that sort of thing um, and we've been talking as a club too, and I think we are going to go outside and look for the future, for future funds. I don't think we're looking for 10 grand every year. This is a, a one shot. And this, this whole thing was kind of sprung on us last minute too. Uh, we didn't realize that uh, the chamber was going to walk away from it. Um, so. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. that's basically what happened, right? The chamber Here. stepped aside. You know, a lot of the a lot of the things that are going on right now are symptoms of of uh, a little bit of fragment fragmenting in the social economic ability of the community. So, uh, I know I was going to get into talking about um, you know doing a local economic development strategy and then using the five capitals. The reason why I was suggesting the five capitals. Um, maybe I might even get into this now because it plays it plays a role here. Um, uh, the five capitals which I shared, uh, and I'll just name them quickly, is the, the, the primary one is natural capital. So your farmland, it could be mining, could be oil, could be fishing, all your natural capitals, okay? They're, and they only exist in the environment basically, all right? And then you have human capital which is an issue that we all face and with different employment and, and drawing certain workers into our community. It also relates to the educational level, the leadership level in certain organizations. Um, and then you have the social capital, which is about bonding and local groups bonding together, working together. And in our communities here, we have a lot of local bonding, but there's not as much uh, social bridging. There's social bonding, but it's not as much as social bridging that could occur. And so under your social networks, you have everything from political to economic to uh, volunteer sector, your cultural sector, and all the volunteers or people with influence in your community that sit on various boards and work with various organizations. So if you have a chamber of commerce that is actively involved with, for example, the Economic Development Committee, and there's people are working together, it's easier to get them to agree to do certain things because people enjoy working with each other, okay? And if you start to lose some of those fabrics in your community, and it happens, it happens in every community, you have to tr try to find a way to build those fabrics up again and try to create more opportunities. A lot of social clubs used to actually go and get and ask bank managers to be on their boards, to be in their members. So the, usually... If you had two or three banks in your community, there might be one in Lyons, there might be one in Kiwanis, there might be one on Kinsman or Rotary, and they were involved. They saw the need in the community, so they found ways for the banks to be involved. If you, if you, if you don't have that social bridging going on, you'll lose out on those opportunities. This is about community development. OK, so this is why we call it local economic community development. And what does it mean for your community? So if you're creating these social bridges, for example, which I think is extremely important in Clearview Township, you've got a community like Creemore that identifies as Creemore, not as Clearview Township. They've, they've got real strong social bonding. They've got a lot of influential people in their own community to really push for what they want to do, and they're successful. They're not bridging so much with Stainer or other areas in thinking of other potential economic opportunities. Let's say, for example, we got into a Creamore and Stainer if they jointly shared in a home show or they jointly shared in a boat and trailer show or they jointly shared in a farm equipment show or whatever it could be, right? To draw, you'd have two locations. You could run shuttles between them. You could uh, have it as a weekend. Those are the types of things that wow. you'll see, you see in a really vibrant community, right? We're going to get when, to this, John. Yeah, John, I thought, you're, you're amazing. I get it. Like, you know, it's like we just wound you up and you just went off there. 
we haven't finished discussing uh, the uh, music market and fund uh, music market and market funding, but no. I hear you. <laughs> so did, did you want to uh, clarify any of the steps that we need to do to, to get to that funding? I like think to take it to council. I think just what Barry said, it has to be a recommendation to council and we'll push to get the funding for, for the group. But, but, but this is indicative of the issue, right? That's sure why it is. I, want to I hear you. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's indicative of the issue in why, in why I think we need to look at local economic development, a strategy for local economic development. Sort of ties in with Judith put on the agenda as well and what she's looking for for a hotel. If yeah. you're going to draw people in, if you're going to draw a hotel to your community, what sort of things are going on that has people staying overnight, for That's example? Right. Right. Yeah. We all we know we can build on what's going on in Wasaga and Collingwood. But what are we doing in Clearview that may want to draw somebody in overnight? Like if you have a weekend home show, you may draw people in. If you have a, a, other types of events, it could be anything from outdoor adventures, for example, with all the different trails and, and whatnot that this community o opens. All the different day adventures that could possibly want to come in and demonstrate what they have at a at a weekend show for example at either one of the arenas right. and to me, to me that so when when you put together a plan to draw a hotel you have all these things in place they'll, they'll want to see how strong the volunteer network is they're going to want to see how closely tied in you know the chamber of commerce is with the municipality and with and with uh, local businesses and the banks they're going to want to see all that yeah and it's important. So, so I, I'm, I get it. And I think we're going to talk about that all in a minute. Uh, I'd like to get, finish this motion and then we'll, uh, we'll get right to it. Is that okay, Mr. Ferguson? That's okay with me. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> awesome. Well done. Uh, Jen Kane Percy, do you have anything there written up or what do you have for me? Nope. You're oh. muted. <laughs> Sorry. My internet has been cutting out. Um, what what is it you want? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, really? All right. So Barry had a motion that uh, did you copy down uh, Barry's motion? Um, I did. Um, Mr. Chair, um, Barry would like to show would like to motion that we support music in the park up to ten thousand. Um, and then look to where the funds would come out of, whether it be the Economic Development Advisory Committee or possibly the Community Assistant Grant. Okay. And that'll be recommended to Council through a report from John Ferguson, CAO. All right. And that's by Barry and seconded by Judith. Anything else further? Okay. I'm going to call it then. All those in favor? I guess I should, I, I should sit tight. I shouldn't vote on this. Am I correct? Well, you, you, you don't have to vote. No. It carries. Okay. Thank you, Bill. All right. That's great. Well done. Okay. Judith, are you ready to take on John? Cause you and you, you both are going to have a lot to say here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a lot to say. Well, you will. It's good. Go for it. Yeah. I guess B and C are kind of the same as, as one, because when we talked about the hotel, issue. I think John mentioned about using some of our budget to do a feasibility study. Am I right? Yeah. Okay, John's nodding. I'm wondering if that's, if we should step back from that and do a local survey first of businesses, because if you have a hotel, you don't want it to be based like in our area. We want to have it support businesses as well. Right. Yeah. Cause if you're thinking of hockey tournaments, that season's from January to March, if you're like hiking, you're, you want to find revenue year round, which could lead from businesses, correct? So should we do a survey of all the local businesses? Like does Reinhardt's bring in executives that need a place to stay overnight or short-term rentals because they bring in a, an accountant consultant from somewhere else and they need a hotel for three nights? Does Walker Aggregates use that? Do other businesses, like we have guys that break down in our area that aren't local and we drive them up to Collingwood to a hotel. doesn't happen often, but or adding to that, like not just survey about the hotel, is there other things we should be asking our businesses as a committee? What do they see our role as or what do they see a need for in the community? So I thought I'd put it out there to see if that's a, something we should do or how do we, and I'm talking all areas, like from our, our cafes to our Reinhardt's to everybody. Good point, Judith. 
it, it's it's a valid point for sure. I, I appreciate that. Jennifer White, go ahead. Um, ju just wondering, are we trying to assess the scope of how much we need a hotel or are we trying, because I don't think the businesses are going to say that they don't want one. I think I generally say, who would be supportive, I would imagine, except for potentially B&B owners. Yeah, I think, I think hotel would just be like one of the questions on the survey. I think we need to, to feel out where they think our committee is of use to them and what they see in the community that they're lacking in support from the township or in general. Um, like our, our um, I don't know, what all, what all we put on that. I'm just kind of throwing it out there to see yeah. what ideas could be surveyed of them. Like what would, I don't know, give us some direction as a committee on where do we need to go. Sure. And some of them well, might say a hotel is not efficient for us or not of use. So then we know yeah. developing a plan towards hotels as an example, we know our marketplace isn't our businesses, right? So they may, they might point us in the direction that um, maybe sidewalks are more important or advertising locally or pamphlets or like, who knows what they might come back with, but it might be a good right. endeavor to get feedback. I think that's, I think it's a worthy, uh, worthy recommendation. I really do, Judith. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, an economic development committee can do at a municipal level, obviously, is to support local businesses and support small business, large business, all those businesses that need, uh, you know, information or joint uh, promotion uh, across the whole town and, and also to find ways that they can do business more effectively and efficiently in their own right. Um, so it's, it's difficult to think that the Economic Development Committee would give a recommendation that we need more sidewalks, uh, you know, as because as, as, you brought up sidewalk. I'm just thinking it would really work if we, if we had a you know, an area where there was uh, going to be a significant commercial growth or for retail that we could say that we needed more sidewalks, where the sidewalk generally is something that's in a residential area, which isn't directly connected to economic development. It's, it can, you know, we can, you can say that anything is economic development, but I, I hear what you're saying. So yeah, I just I'm, I threw that as an idea of some. Sure. Uh, but I'm, what I'm trying to think is here, is it, is it, is there anything that, um, that we could put in this survey if we if we go ahead and do something like this and do you know a bit of a you know a monkey uh, monkey survey or whatever they're called uh, if if we do something like that uh, you know what type of questions uh, come to mind from the members that that uh, that you think we should be asking in a survey like this and so I would go with the first question go right to you Judith what do you think is the first question we got to ask well I think a general one is like what um what do they what would they see our role as as an economic development committee how can an economic um, how could our committee assist your business perfect so they might be very broad and give them a space to write a paragraph or two perfect um, and then Good question yeah you could go right down to don't want to bring up speed limits <laughs> sure you can. yeah maybe it's that should be another issue is there um do you have concerns with road safety or um like Ryan Arts might bring up that they have problems because their parking's on one side of the highway and their business is on the other. So maybe that's not that they might yep. be coming out with stuff that we as a committee or the township can't get involved in. It's not under their umbrella. Maybe that's yep. a can of worms. We don't want to go too broad and open up stuff like that, but. Yeah. Well, the, another question. Go ahead, Barry. Could, yeah. Another question you could put in there is, is, um, is their business uh, affected by tourism? I mean, we have businesses that have nothing to do with tourism. Correct. Yeah. We have other businesses that do have, you know, that benefit from tourism. So it'd be nice to know, you know, how many of our businesses are not affected by, you know, the, the quantity, the quantity of tourism, and those that are. Uh, because, like I said, we have several businesses that tourism don't matter to them, right? Right. It's, it, yeah. it's, they're they're more interested in, in local economics and 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 getting customers, not. Yeah. So, yeah, so, I mean, this, the specialty vehicle guy down in uh, New Lowell is not a tourism-based industry, yeah. right? He's, he specializes in trucks, but they're important because they're employers, they yeah. bring business, they, they bring commerce. Right. Exactly. All those things are important. So I, I hear you totally. And we do have a, a good, healthy mix of those types of businesses that are, uh, you know, that are, that are not sort of impacted directly by tourism. 
the uh, we certainly do have a significant number of those that are tourism based, and it's it's a challenge every time because uh, you often wonder what type of general impact for the whole community you get from a tourism operation. But that's also a good question. Right. Anybody else who's got a question? That this is this is a good discussion being recorded. Uh, Jen and I can go back and and review some of these questions and see if we can put together a bit of a survey. I had one more comment, if I may, Your Worship. Sure. Yeah. So is this something that we could, and I'm going to direct this to Mr. Ferguson, is this something we could direct this for staff to come up with a, uh, an economic development survey to ask, you know, to be put forth to our, our businesses to ask the questions? Is that something staff could prepare? Do you feel they're competent to, to do that? And I'm not trying to imply that they're not competent, but um, you know, uh, is that something you think they could pull together a, a reasonable short survey to ask some, you know, the basic questions that we've just talked about? Do you think that's something that's feasible, uh, John? John? Uh, I'm not sure if the, if the uh, present uh, staff uh, have done that as of yet um, from an economic perspective. So. Yeah. Um, part of the, part of the uh, thing I find interesting about Judith's uh, request is that there's so many various types of business and uh, asking the right question. It may be relevant to one business, but not to another. And uh, so you, you want to get a group of questions that they may touch on or maybe they want to maybe they want to focus in on questions that they typically wouldn't expect being asked of. <clears throat> what I mean by that, Barry, is you talked about tourism. How do people feel about tourism, for example? And uh, so just I wanted to get back to uh, uh, the five capitals again, and this may help us frame what would go in a survey. So uh, so if you if you take a look at, uh, for example, you have a lot of farmers in the community. You have people that provide farm equipment. You have people that uh, create a very unique product, such as the uh, vinegar from Reinhardt's. What natural capital they rely on for that, for example. And uh, so what, what aspects of that natural capital they have to be concerned with? They may come down to a question where they may have an issue with human capital, meaning can they get qualified workers? That may be an issue. Or they may come down to an issue under manufactured capital or infrastructure. So getting back to your point, Judith, about, um, you know, if they're bringing big trucks in and out of the community, how is how easy it is for them to do that. And uh, if they're, you know, they have wastewater, they have water, they have all these things that rely on infrastructure. What are their concerns going forward? And what are some of the things that they would like to see going forward? They may respond to a different set of questions. So you could also, if you're dealing with, uh, people that are in sporting uh, goods store or or arts and culture, uh, they may want to know what those volunteer communities are doing. Uh, you know, uh, how many sport teams are in the area? Uh, how many uh, events are going to be on at the arena for hockey or figure skating or whatever it may be? They may want to know certain things around the volunteer envir environment. Um, and then you may want to uh, get into the financial capital and really financial capital is really the other four somehow come together in some format. You really can't have financial capital with at least two or three of the other ones. And uh, if you don't have two or three of the other ones, you may not be getting the participation in your business that you're looking for. And when I, it comes back to that level for most, if you're selling something, you want people to participate in buying what you're selling. And if you're providing a service, you want people to participate in, in obtaining that service. So what in the other four categories could be supported to increase the financial capital of the area or the economic ability of the area? So we talked about putting on things that bring people downtown, that they may go and they experience the shops downtown, gets them participating. That's what Bill is working on with the with the music aspect of being at the uh, park here in downtown Stainer. And that is a social piece that draws people in for a variety of different variety of different reasons. And he's on the economic development committee. So his role in volunteering on the economic development committee is having an impact on bringing people downtown for a certain function. Um, so all these things play a role and I think if we if we got into uh, the economic development strategy planning for the community, we would certainly ask some of these 
business owners to come out and participate as we work through this. And then uh, you'll go and you'll, under, you'll have an opportunity to understand the various other areas that businesses may be interested in. And then you can get their feedback and, on maybe what they would like to see and then put, another, put a survey out at that point in time. Let, let, help us educate ourselves a little bit better about what's going on in the community. We also, you were asking about our role. I think if they understood what, our, what we were trying to accomplish, they could help identify what our role could be. They could give us input on what they feel our role could be. And I think your point of the survey needs to take place, but it's a matter of when. And when should we inject that to see when we get feedback? Because if we're not asking the right questions, we may not get the right, the right answers to help us move forward as a community, that's all. And I think the questions of a survey are extremely important. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. Let... Barry, Barry's in again, I see that. Okay. Jen, um, and, Jen and Bill need to get in here too, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, so, <laughs> but, but, but I, I, I totally agree. Uh, tourism is not the only thing with that economic development is so much more than just the tourism factor. Absolutely. That, that Absolutely. was the whole point. That was the whole point I was trying to make. I'm thinking if we want to, you know, to do something and, and, and do a survey, I, I think, I think we need to do a workshop on it. Uh, your worship. I think a, a workshop where we can sit around and just deal with, what questions, what do we need to ask, you know, and, and, and those type of questions, and then, and then have a meeting, open it up to the businesses to come and talk to us and, and, and have that type of event, you know, and, uh, and just invite all the businesses and say, what is it we can, what is it we can do for you? That's what we need to ask. What is it as a business that we can do for you? And we're going to get some crazy answers, but um, I, I think that's where we need to know where we stand is, is what is it? What because there's so many different areas, you know, other than tourism, you know, that 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 need help. One of the biggest issues today, and I can tell you from the county economic development and, and all the businesses we deal with, finding labor. Finding oh, yeah. labor is a huge problem. And we're back to affordable housing uh, for labor to live in. Those are two huge issues, you know. And uh, anyways. Okay. Uh, Judith had your hand up and I thought Jennifer did too. Go ahead, uh, Judith. So maybe we need to step back and if we want to start out with a survey, we make it very generic and not a lot of room for input. Like just say, what, what, what is your business industry? Are you tourism? Are you manufacturing? Are you agriculture? How many people do you employ? Um, maybe just like a six question generic. So we get a, a database on who our businesses are because that that's, probably doesn't exist. Good, really? Yeah. That's a good, good point. start. Good start. Yeah. Yeah. And then we, we could do split off surveys from that possibly and target one sector versus another and use questions specific. If we want to, you know, we have a question at the or space in the bottom for comments back or whatever. Yep. Um, but that might give us a data database to work on. We've had some big changes like Stainer specifically DARPAC is sold. It's yep. still running as DARPAC, but different owners Stainer rental, huge yep. community owner. And now is owned by Cooper, which is nationwide. I don't know if you Google Cooper, but they're big. They're very big, yeah. So there's been some, been some shifts in your local community that um, I think you're going to feel in different ways than your. So it's good to reach out to those new businesses and see yep. if they're even willing to participate and what they're looking at. Before I go to Jennifer, I want to add too is, uh, you know, certainly some of the, uh, let's call them the longstanding businesses in our community have been going through some transition. Uh, but I can assure you as the mayor, I have uh, already had several meetings with people who are new businesses who are wanting to open up and wanting to start and wanting to get built. And they're trying to meet with us to, uh, uh, to try to get things started, uh, you know, dealing with the, the challenges of the water capacity and sewer capacity and dealing with the Planning Act issues. You know, everybody knows there's a sign on downtown Stainer there about a McDonald's coming to our community. Uh, that, that's been well talked about. Uh, we've got two separate properties that have, uh, have uh, you know, public documents on them regarding building uh, food stores, uh, different uh, new food stores, two different properties in Stainer. So there's there's that. And 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 certainly the, the community knows that we've been dealing with Jarlette which uh, could bring a major seniors uh, residents to our community, which have over 120 employees. I mean, it's a, 
that's a pretty significant uh, thing too. So there's a lot of business and jobs and so on coming to this town. And, um, and it's funny because it's the longstanding businesses like the Huron Tractor, like the, you know, Cremor Springs, uh, Reinhardt that have been here forever that continue to uh, employ uh, a lot of people and, and continue to be a, a great contributor to the commerce in our community. So this is why I'm very interested in this survey, like you were suggesting to have a short, simple thing, give us an idea of what your business is all about and what is it that you're, you're hoping for the Economic Development Committee to, uh, to help you with. So that, that's, that's where I'd like to see it go. Jennifer, over to you, Jennifer White. Uh, just, I, I guess now leaning into what you both said in certain ways, um, taking a big step back and saying, what are we trying to accomplish? What do we want to know? What do we want to solve for? Um, so I think that before we even, you know, to Judith's point, we pre-survey the survey, but I think we need to figure out what we need to, to figure out here, like what, what we want to actually understand yeah. about this community. Do we want to understand their growth trajectory over the next few years? Are they hiring? Are they shrinking? Are they moving out? Are they moving in? How do we... Surely we know a lot about our business community already, so we should be able to gather that information quite easily. How are we contacting these people? How do we validate that the people who respond to a survey are just as relevant as people who don't respond to a survey? Right. So it's, I just wanna make sure that we're making this equitable, sure. fairly accessible, and that we're planning for why we're doing this um, okay. before bothering people with, with um, these details. Concur with you completely on that very important point about the validity of who's who's going to participate in the survey. Um, if you guys recall, uh, the uh, tw 2019 was the 25th anniversary of Clearview Township, and one of the things that happened with that little committee is that they did reach out to many, many, many business. In fact, there's three or four pages of businesses, business contacts, emails, phone numbers, names, etc., uh, in a file sitting in my desk, and that's uh, that's available. That we, uh, through the staff, through John Ferguson, we can uh, review that and make sure that we reach out to each of these uh, individuals and try to get some type of uh, contact with them or get them to give us a bit of a survey, even if they answer it over the phone. And that we can start collecting some data and ask them if they could do that. We could perhaps email them and so on. There's a lot of ways to get this information out there uh, and, and to try to collect some of that data. Um, but I, you know, I, I got to ask you all as volunteer members, you can take a look at the, uh, the document that council uh, supported uh, that created this committee and it'll show you what we're supposed to do. And clearly uh, the terms of reference are here to help us uh, you know, serve the local small businesses and large businesses in our community. And uh, that's what we need to do. And it's over and over and over again, it's about information, getting information out there, getting uh, data about the businesses, trying to create uh, business opportunities where they're sharing and there's commerce between each other, those networking opportunities for some of the great success stories of past EDC committees here in Clearview. And, uh, you know, we can, we can do that again, or we can, um, you know, we can focus on, on the big issue, the troublesome issues of, of affordable housing and really push the province and the county to step up and help us. So, you know, we're a small town, but we can take on the big issues if that's where we want to go. And it's all in the, uh, in the terms of reference. If you want to take a look at that, I'm sure we could send it all to you again. Um, anybody else with any thoughts or comments on this as we've been collecting some good information here already? Just one more comment. Maybe timing sure. won't allow it, but we've got some summer students coming on board, I assume, in early May. Yep. Maybe it, this kind of, I don't know if we'd have a survey ready before they would be able to help us, but if we wanted to go door to door, maybe there's some cheap labor there. There is, uh, there, there could be a possibility for that. We can work with John and, uh, and see what the, uh, the tourism staff or what their workload might be that we could uh, maybe on those rainy days, if they're not out uh, working at the eco garden, they could be making phone calls and filling in survey information. I don't know, but we can uh, we should take a look at that for sure. Um, and, and I believe the uh, tourism staff are in the middle of their hiring process right now. As a matter of fact, I think they're, they're going through that right now. That's a good point, Judith. John, have you got any further comment? Um, 
No, I, 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 I just think we need to create the readiness for us to fully understand it. I, I think uh, Jennifer's point's well taken. I think uh, surveys can help us. I think the data collection piece on survey would help us get an understanding of what's out there. And uh, But I think we, we, if we develop an understanding first, and it could lead to another survey more specifically asking questions related to each business once we know what to ask. And uh, I think that would help us as well. Okay. Well, if I may, I'd like, yeah, there's Jennifer Kane, Jen Kane Percy. Um, I'm going to go to Jen because uh, from this discussion, perhaps Jen, you and I can schedule a time to review some of these questions and, and we'll come up with something. Jen, go ahead. Um, yeah, I was just going to add, um, I've used SurveyMonkey before and I, I recall doing um, a survey and it, it was really good. It was asking about um, the population, like declining adult population, um, asking residents if they're um, concerned or somewhat concerned about high paying skilled jobs. Um, it also asked about um, improving infrastructure to support and encourage industrial and commercial uh, regional growth. And again, just the general questions as um, as mentioned, like, are you concerned? Are you very concerned, not concerned? Um, improving and expanding the local tax base. Um, that was another question. Um, and then for tourism, like the balancing quality of life and growth management. Again, it, it's just like, are you concerned? Are you very concerned? Affordable housing was always a question. I think affordable childcare. Um, I guess it wouldn't really be a relevant question right now. Um, education, just everything about sustainable development and the big topic, I guess, is the climate is another one. But yeah, I can, I can definitely help with that. All right, I appreciate that very much. Judith, I'll leave it to you to wrap it up. I don't have anything else to say. <laughs> I think I think we all are on the same page. So yeah. I think it's a fact finding survey to begin with to see. I think we need a really good education on who our who our businesses are. I agree with you. And what Thank you very much. In. Thanks for bringing it up. All right. All right, uh, committee. We're going to move ahead. To, uh, uh, item seven is our financial report. There's nothing new to report other than I guess. If I may, I will ask at our next meeting, we have a bit of a report because uh, we'll perhaps have a decision about uh, the support from Mr. Roscar. So we'll have a bit of a report there to get an update on what's happening. Okay. Uh, so uh, John, we're gonna go right to you, back to your five capitals and uh, your strategic community economic development strategy. Uh, I reread that again this morning and I had another look at that. Uh, that was a great page. So. Um, what do you, what do you want to talk about here, Mr. Ferguson? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Jennifer, could you bring up, uh, could you bring it up on a share screen? The, um, yeah. the economic, uh, development, uh, and I just took the, this offline. There's a lot of sources you can use from, but, uh, what I, what I like that this gentleman had written, I find it here again. There it is. How are you making out, Jen? Oh, there we go. Sorry, just sharing the screen right now. I think you had it. Oh. Yeah, your internet's not very good. Oh, nope, it's coming. There you go. Okay, okay. go ahead, John. Yeah. yeah, if you can just scroll down a little bit, uh, Jennifer, and basically uh, to get to the point to, to determine whether or not we feel that uh, we need a formal economic development strategy. And some of the things that this gentleman listed uh, in it were the uh, rapid population growth or decline. And we're typically going to be getting into rapid population growth, uh, a booming economy or stagnation. 
if we're having rapid growth, we should be getting some uh, community economic benefit from that. Uh, but are some businesses experience stagnation? Uh, job creation and retention issues. This goes back to uh, what everybody just uh, spoke about, about human capital. And are we able to get qualified people for certain jobs? And, uh, and I think some businesses are struggling with that. The economic st stability in an unpredictable federal or global market, as you can see, the gas prices are extremely high right now. Uh, there's a lot of federal and global things that are impacting uh, everybody. There's probably not a whole lot we can do about it, but how can we be more resilient as a local community? Public and private partnerships and investment. And what does that mean for a variety of different sectors? What does that mean uh, uh, in the business sector? What does that mean in the uh, public sector or, or even the volunteer sector? Uh, human resource development, education and training. We have a lot of, uh, as Jennifer mentioned, about the uh, demographics. If we have a lot of, uh, if our population is aging, uh, do we have the same interest in people volunteer to support uh, local uh, service clubs and local groups that put things on that draw people to our community? Um, land use and sustainable housing growth. Uh, this can be said for the commercial and industrial area as well. Uh, and what kind of industrial stock do we have? And then the social, recreational, arts, and cultural development in the community that typically a lot of people want to do in their spare time. And uh, people get out and about when they participate in these types of activities. So these are, I think, things that we should ask ourselves. Do you think we need an economic development strategy as it relates to some of these issues? And I think we have, we have, uh, we have concerns or, or, or successes in, in, uh, in all of these areas. And I think it would uh, do us well to uh, develop the strategy in that respect. Um, so you can just scroll through quickly a, a little bit further there, Jen, and the second one. Assemble a team of six to 12 key stakeholders. Well, we have, a, we have an economic development committee, but you may want to uh, invite some people from the business sector or, uh, or from the uh, uh, volunteer sector, for example, people that are, you know, uh, leading uh, volunteer groups such as they may be looking after minor hockey, they may be looking after uh, figure skating or, or some other uh, recreational or cultural activity. Um, if we can, uh, so if you can just back, sorry, if you just bring your screen just back a bit, just to the, no, a little bit up, just, yeah, sorry. Uh, assemble a team and if you, if you take a look at uh, uh, what we have in our community for people that I think have valuable uh, experience and good input to what we're doing is that you can call upon, uh, you know, certain elected officials, uh, leaders within the business community, residential members, nonprofit agencies, uh, even somebody from uh, your local churches, a member of a local regional workforce development office, something of that nature to get them involved, to see uh, what, what they could bring to the table. Um, if you just scroll up a little bit, talks about how big your stakeholder group should be, depending on the size of your community. Sorry, Jennifer, I meant to go the other way. <laughs> um, it talks about just the little photograph at the back there, just talked about the size of your community and about making your committee not too large that it's not workable, but big enough that you're getting a good, a good section of your uh, stakeholders. And it just gives an example here, 4,005. Um, and basically develop your plan. And that's really, um, coming to use certain tools that help you to develop the plan. So um, everything is always in a planning cycle on how you would how you would develop a strategy and your your economic development plan is never finished. It's always an open document that you're working with. And so you'd want to develop the framework around that. So we can move on to um, uh, the five capitals, if you don't mind, Jennifer, and I'm not I tried clicking them on today. I'm not sure if you'll be able to click on them or not. And if not, I'll, uh, I'll see if I can bring them up at my end. I'll let you. Second here. Okay, 
And again, I'm just using uh, uh, what I'm finding off the internet here as an example. And this is, uh, uh, once I share my screen, I think you'll, you'll see the web page. Oh, you have it up there, Jennifer? Okay, good. Oh, yeah, I found it. Okay, so um, if, you, if you can scroll down for me. So, okay, stop there at natural capital. Just back up a bit. Right up to where it says natural capital. Thank you. Okay, so this is really from a business perspective as it relates to natural capital. So it, let's say, for example, you're in the business of farming, you're in the business of mining. The natural capital is extremely important to you. That's really the basis of your economics. And everything you do around that is to make sure that you don't exhaust your natural capital. You don't want it depleted. You want to have it sustainable for the future. So um, what do you do from a natural capital perspective in the community so that, for example, if there's uh, increased uh, potential of flooding in certain areas that could create risk factors for farmers or other type of, uh, of industry, what are you doing from a natural capital perspective to try to make sure that that's sustainable? in some way. And um, uh, so it's to substitute naturally scarce materials for those that are more abundant and uh, ensure that all mined minerals are used efficiently within cyclical systems. Uh, eliminate the accumulation of man-made substances and products in nature. Substitute all persistent and non-natural compounds. So all this is about being more environmentally friendly, but still managing your natural capitals. And this may be something that's of an interest to the community. Uh, so if you scroll down to the next uh, capital. So human capital, as we spoke about, this is really where um, businesses will want human capital for their, for, for their employees. You know, your volunteer groups will want human capital to manage the volunteer boards, to, uh, to put on events, to coach your kids, to to create new leaders in the community. All of this is under human capital and how you measure how that will work for you as a community. So you have natural capital, it relates to um, your natural resources, uh, your water, your land, et cetera. If you move on from that human capital, I think the next one is social capital. Social capital builds on the human capital and of those networks that get built. So we talked about um, volunteer groups getting together, for example, that will put on an event, such as the, uh, the music that's played in the summertime at the uh, park. Uh, but there's many more events and festivals that are put on. All your small halls are putting on the small halls festivals. And all these people that are working together in bonded groups to put these together are all impacting a good opportunity for your community where people from out of town are wanting to come in and see these festivals and people in your own local community are going to those festivals. So it gets people participating and you can build on that. If you can get people involved and they can participate, they'll create more participation amongst other people. So if you have small bonded groups, can they bridge with other groups to maybe take on something else that might be fun and beneficial for the community? So that's the social capital. And I'm just giving a snapshot of it. And um, if you can move on to the next one, Jennifer. And the next one's manufactured capital. So um, if, if we look at it from the, uh, the recreational perspective, do you have the ball fields? Do you have the arenas? You know, is that meeting your needs? And if you look at other aspects of uh, in the cultural world, do you have museums? Do you have theater? Do you have, do you have that infrastructure to support those pursuits that many in your community will want to pursue? Um, then it goes on to the other aspect of manufactured capital, which includes uh, your infrastructure, clean drinking water, uh, sustainable uh, sewer treatments, and that you can build your community and you have enough infrastructure to do that. Um, some of the infrastructure problems I think we have in Stainer really relates to the amount of traffic that's on 26 in the downtown core. That really impacts a lot of the local businesses there, I'm sure. So is there a future solution to that? And it's a complex problem, but these are the types of things that we, we can think of when we think of the manufactured capital. We want our manufactured capital to support the other capitals and that'll help support a better financial capital or economic capital in your community. And so the last one is uh, 
financial capital, and that's your economics basically. And financial capital is the only artificial one. It does not exist without the others. So, uh, and it can be very, very uh, vibrant in a very well working community, or it can struggle depending on uh, what's going on or what factors impact the community. So, um, I use the five capitals as a way for each of us around the table. There's other tools, but this one here can help us think about the different issues, a variety of different businesses or a variety of different volunteer groups and a variety of different, uh, sorry, a variety of different uh, uh, other community participants, whether at the residential level or whether at the business level, uh, view their community. So. I, I thought I'd share that. I really think it's something that we would use in a brainstorming session or a workshop that would lead us to what we want to accomplish in an economic development strategy. And you use these tools to get people thinking. And the more people that are in the room that relate to one of those areas, you may find yourself relating to one of those capitals more than another, and so will other people. And they'll bring that to the table as a part of their, as their involvement to, to get them thinking about what might work for the community. And there's other tools that we could use, but I just gave a snapshot of that to see if we wanted to consider doing an economic development strategy. And that's really the, the, the rationale of putting that on the agenda. And uh, we would get together, we'd involve certain people in the community to see if they'd like to participate and let the free ideas flow. And then once you get the ideas, you group them together where you think they can work together. And then you slowly create uh, initiatives out of that, that the community can work on and make improvements. And some of those initiatives could be directed at the municipality to lobby government, for example. Some of those initiatives may be to see if we can get, uh, you know, a volunteer recruitment going, or can we get a human resource development aspect going in our community? Can we get the prices of housing down so we can draw more people to our community that can afford to live and work here, right? Those are some of the things that I think people will want to bring to the table as part of an economic development strategy. And all of those things should be important to your local businesses because those people will then be participating in their community. Excellent points, John. I, I really appreciate you bringing this forward and talking about it. And uh, I also appreciate you sending it out uh, outside of the meeting just so that everybody had a chance to take a look at it and review it, and think about it a little bit. Anybody got any questions to John or any comments about this presentation? You guys are all very patient. Uh, I, I think I think what uh, if I can speak for for John because uh, we did have a brief chat about this. I think he's got a really good point here, uh, committee, and the fact that you know we could we could host a meeting after perhaps this survey thing that uh, that Ju Judith has suggested, and once we get the survey information. That'll get some interest and then we'll host a meeting and we'll have a, a big discussion about this with business leaders and, and we'll strategically invite those people that are those leaders, just like you said, to find those people and, and get them out there. And, uh, you know, we have to wine them a little bit and dine them a little bit to get them out. We'll have to do that. And, and, and then that will we'll stir them up to get them talking about Cleary Township economic development. So, John, we, 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 we could actually put one of that, that, that question on the. The, the questions that we send out to the local businesses, would you be interested in planning economic development for your community? And sure. would you participate in a planning session, for example? We could ask that question. Yeah. Does it have to be people from our community or can it be economic development types from outside of the, the community or our town? Good oh, question, I think Bill. You, I, I think you could absolutely involve people from the outside. Sometimes an outside lens is helpful. And uh, yeah, I think overall, you, you, you're, you're trying to come up with a local economic de development strategy, but you're trying to survive in the greater world, right? So other input will certainly be helpful. Judith, you were gonna say something? Yeah, I just, one of the most interesting ones I think right now is the social side of it. Just coming out of COVID, um, regardless of the economy, the community is, desperate for connection. I think there's extremes. I think there's some people that are still turtled and hiding and don't know how to come back out. And then there's other organizations that are struggling to bring people out to become, to stay sustainable, especially with volunteer businesses or volunteer organizations. 
I think you were at that hockey game Sunday. Have you seen more people together in one spot in this township in the last two and a half years? I'm going to say even four, even four years. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It was, it was great. And you'll see like the the younger generation, there's buck and does every weekend and those halls are packed because they're desperate to get out. So that social element of those five points is, is kind of at a unique point in the. Yeah. And from that though, it's just, just on that point, that manufactured capital is important because while it's important that they all want to get out and we all agree with that, we do have to have some, uh, some manufactured capital in there to assist people and, and culturally and socially keep them safe. So, you know, I, I made a comment to members of my council in a, in a message I sent just recently about how, uh, you know, I, I was at that hockey game and there was very few people wearing masks. That's fine. That's their choice. But I can tell you, I watched people go right by the uh, hand sanitizing machine and just every everybody went by, they were, everybody was doing it. Mm-hmm. And you know, three years ago, nobody used those things. Yeah. You know what I mean? You go into it, you'd see them hanging on the wall and the stuff has been in there for three years, you know, like, so anyway, my point is, is that I think uh, culturally we're changed. People will do that and try to keep themselves safe. So they do want to get out. I agree with you, Judith. People want to get out and socialize, but it's interesting to see how the culture has changed a little bit too. Ju- uh, Jennifer, did you have something? Yeah, I, I just want to first of all applaud John for bringing this uh, and and um, your worship for bringing this up. I think that these five pillars of economic development are really crucial, and uh, I'm in full agreement in getting people together in order to uh, you know to really assess what we what we can provide them. And, you know, we are a service committee. We want to also leverage this opportunity to tell the community who we are, what we do, what our scope of work is, um, be able to say that we are here to assist in their recovery. And so I think that it's really important also a bit from a PR perspective that we use this opportunity to essentially launch these initiatives in the community and be able to say that, uh, you know, it's been a rough two years and that we are here to help, um, but we need their input and uh, we need really good discourse around how they see us being able to lean into these biggest opportunities. I think you've just elevated the importance of doing this, Jennifer. Thank you for that. Just look, just look at the kids that have missed out on being on certain sport teams and, and all the things that they learn at certain age groups. Some of them have missed out on that opportunity in the last two years, right? So getting them involved in, in building the confidence of young people, it usually happens at a volunteer level and, and mostly the leadership. You know, the first time they ever have an experience of, of attending a meeting and going through normal procedures is usually at a volunteer level. And those things are important. And, uh, and having people, business leaders and community leaders involved with helping our kids develop better leadership, having them involved is equally important. And uh, so I think... Uh, uh, we should send a follow up with uh, surveys to uh, people at home and saying, look, uh, as parents, are, are you willing to get more involved in, in helping, uh, you know, improve the life for your kids moving forward? And what would you like to do? And do they have suggestions? So I think there's an opportunity to survey and to reach out. But when we understand and I think the first survey is asking those critical questions, I think a later survey could reach out and deal with the gaps that we'll have with their economic development strategy because we will have gaps. And I think reaching those people and getting their feedback, sometimes asking them is the first step of getting them involved. And uh, I yep. think is Brilliant. Any other members with anything for this discussion? All right. You guys are amazing. Thank you very much for, uh, for chipping in on this. Uh, this good, good talk. And uh, uh, I, I commit that Jen uh, Kane Percy and I will spend some time and come up with some information and forward it around to all the members. Okay, and we'll have a quick talk about what uh, what that survey will look like. We'll, we're going to get this started. Good job. All right. Anything uh, anything else? I'll move on to the new business item, which is just uh, information from the county. Uh, we got a little notification. Uh, the county's going to launch a spark program. Um, so that's kind of a neat little uh, little event. Um, I don't really know specifically a whole lot of details, but I do know that Lynn Dolan uh, had a conversation with her several months ago, and she was particularly excited about it. And, uh, and so she wanted, uh, she, she brought it to my attention when I saw this email come out 
I asked uh, Jen to put it on our agenda so that you're aware of it. And so it's on our website and people can, can take a look at it. There is a, it's, it's an event tomorrow, but the exciting part is that they're launching this program through the Tourism Innovation Lab and, and, uh, and to look at, you know, the, the various types of tourism, particularly what caught my attention was agritourism. And, uh, you know, you look at our friends over at Ora Medante, they, uh, they do leverage agritourism right now at this time of the year with their maple syrup production because they, uh, and, and also in Springwater Township, they also leverage that as well. They get a lot of support for the maple syrup production. So there is a little bit of that going on in our township, not so much because uh, most of our ag people are really busy just producing. Um, but I do know that uh, a great partner in our community, uh, Miller, Miller Dairy, do uh, an act of Miller Days once a year. And that right there is a huge agritourism sort of, uh, you know, event. And uh, I always want to celebrate and, uh, and help and support them. I know the township has supported them in the past, but I'm not even sure if Millers are doing it this year or not, but they're like any other business struggling to get restarted. So I'm hopeful that they will. Um, so anyway, I just want to put this on the agenda so people had it and they kind of look at it. Uh, and uh, Barry, uh, I know you're a member of our, our county economic development, and uh, I'm sure you'll hear more about this uh, innovation lab getting going uh, in future meetings. Maybe you could update us and see if there's anything that uh, we could report back to this committee on. Okay. I believe there's one at our, after our next council meeting, which is next week. So I think you're right. Uh, yeah. Economics and development is usually after that. So good. I will report back. Thanks. Is there anybody else with anything that they want to add? Any new business items or any great business stories? No. Judith, you're getting into uh, summer tires down there now. Um, haven't started yet because we had snow uh, last week. I know. <laughs> People, people um, want to get them on. I know. It's, yeah, I'm, middle I'm, of April, Easter I'm, weekend, kind of. Okay. But safety season, all the dump trucks are starting to think about half loads coming off. So they're starting to yeah. line up. Yeah, they would be for sure. For sure. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, if there's nothing else, if nobody has anything else they want to add, we're all good. Okay. Well, then we'll just call for the adjournment. So uh, we will adjourn our, uh, our, meeting, our meeting here. What time is it here? 5.42 p.m. Uh, I'll call for Jennifer White to be the mover and Bill Roscar to be the seconder. All in favor. Okay. All in favor. We're adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Bill, send me any information that you think I might need. Yes, I will. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Have Thanks, a good everybody. Evening, everybody.